Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel where we do painting tutorials. I start by coloring the top of the sky with my dark blue and for this painting I will try to avoid the clouds and leave them blank. I'm going to use the white of the paper for the clouds instead of uh, picking it up while it's still wet with the napkin. I want a bit more contrast for the sky plus I will be coloring them in a different uh, color than blue so I just really want to avoid a blue undertone for my clouds. I use more pressure on the top side of the paper and less and less as I move down as to get a natural looking gradient and I apply the yellow blue which is a lighter blue on the bottom of the sky as well. Then I take a watercolor brush and I start blending left to right. I start from the darker side this time because I will be painting around the clouds like I said and I just really want to focus on getting in all of the nooks and crannies between the fluff of the clouds. And once I reach that um, bottom piece between them, I'm just going to go upwards again to smooth everything out. Sorry I cut that uh, scene right there, but I don't know why my camera was not focusing for a bit. And while the sky dries, I take my earthy green and I color on uh, the foliage and all of that forest slash river shores uh, we have in the picture. I'm going to do a base layer of my earthy green and with the next layer then I'm going to start building up details and shadows. So now, yeah, I just cover everything with it, take my watercolor brush and I activate using a scribble motion. So just tiny, tiny circles and going on top of each other. I hope you can see this on camera. This is one of my favorite watercolor painting techniques because it tends to mimic nature um, very nicely in my opinion and just helps create tiny shapes in that big blob of green that then I'm going to outline with a different color to make them pop. It just saves us some of the work and it's very easy once you get the hang of it. At this point uh, the sky has dried so I take a light orange or a dark yellow and I outline the bottom of the clouds with it. For the clouds on the left side, I tried to follow the reference picture. I didn't like how it turned out, so just outline the bottom with yellow and the top with blue and you'll be fine. I did the other way around and I was not too happy with it and I'm gonna spend a big amount of time trying to fix that later on. I add some pale geranium lake um, between the yellow and the blue hopefully to get a nice lavender grayish from them and I did but again I didn't like the order. For the clouds I blend from light to dark so from the dark yellow towards the pale geranium lake and towards the blue. And like I said I didn't like those two on the left side so I'm just picking it up with a napkin as I go and I'm going to paint them over once on the surface has dried. But I accidentally didn't uh, wait for it to fully dry. I thought it was dry, but it was not. And I get and I got that weird uh, mark on the cloud on the top left corner, which I'm I am going to fix. But while it dries perfectly, I take my Taylor blue and my helium blue relish. And I do these uh, patches of them on top of the lake. I'm just going left to right, left to right in a tiny space up till that forest we have on the horizon. I leave a blank space for a highlight and then go over it very lightly with some orange. Then I take my watercolor brush, I tap it in the water and I clean it mostly on the napkin. As you can see, I'm frequently tapping it on the napkin. That way it's almost dry and I get a very neat water effect. It looks more like waves, more like water speckles. If you've been watching me for a bit on YouTube, you know it's definitely one of my favorite ways to paint a water. Like I said, uh, that forest and the shores have dried, so I take my dark blue and I start outlining all of the more prominent shapes that I see. If there's like a tiny circle blob or something, I'm going to make that into a tree, just outline the bottom and shade the bottom of the tree crown and then I'm going to add a tree trunk and we have a tree. 
so I'm trying to separate them as best as I can and then I do a big shadow with dark blue beneath all of them. I'm not pressing too hard, I don't want any dents in the paper and by going a bit lighter it also gives uh, some nice texture like grass or dirt which again is helpful to achieving a landscape look with watercolor pencils. Then once again I take my brush, barely any water on it and I'm just activating the dark blue. I'm activating, I'm not blending. What that means is I just very lightly tap on top of it and leave it. I don't take it around, I don't try to blend it, I just leave it as is. But by adding a tiny amount of water it makes them slightly more vibrant and it makes the color pop a bit better on the background. For the clouds, I thought they were dry, so I go back on them with some dark blue and some orange, blue on the top, orange on the bottom. I try to blend them with a good amount of water here, because I want these to transition into each other very nicely, and you need a couple of droplets to achieve that. You don't need to make a puddle, but a good amount of water is needed. Then I just keep on outlining my trees, and I take my orange and I apply it here and there on the top. I go back to my dark blue and I outline the shores rather thickly. I want a very very strong shadow right there and I repeat the same on the other side as well. I go between those leaf blades, that foliage, that bush, I don't know what that is, on the bottom right corner. Then I go on top of it with dark cadmium orange because blue and orange cancel each other out and make a very nice dark gray slash dark brown, almost black. And then I just go over it with barely any water to activate. I try to bring some of that uh, mix onto the lake by a slightly going horizontally on top of it, blending it horizontally with my brush. As you can see, it's easier to show you this rather than try to explain. But this also gives me a nice shadow from all of the greenery on either side that is being reflected onto the lake. Then I take again my orange and I add hints of it on top of the greenery as a highlight, just like we have in the clouds, we have a bit of orange, we have a bit of orange on the lake. So I'm going to add a bit on top of the trees to make it look like, well, maybe not yet a sunset, but the sun is going down or coming up or something of the sorts. As I was activating it, I noticed it was a bit too much, I had a bit too much, so I just tap over with a napkin to mute it down. Then I take my walnut brown, which I have sharpened to a very fine point, and I add tiny lines between those shapes I outlined for tree trunks. You can make them I-shaped or V-shaped, just keep it different, but it look a bit more interesting and a bit more realistic. Then I lightly hover with my brown on top of the river shores. I'm going to rotate my sketchbook so it's just comfortable to me to reach the other side as well. Then I do some very light shading on top of the field on the right side with some blue and I go over with some more blue just for some more shadows. Then lastly I take my black and I'm going to add a couple of skipping stones on top of the lake. I'm just doing semi-circles here. Yeah, I just do a semi-circle and add a line beneath it. For that uh, cloud I messed up because I didn't wait fully, I just erased that line, but make sure it is perfectly dry. I erased it with a pencil eraser, which is rather sturdy, and this is the finished result. I'd like to give a very special thank you to my patrons for the month of May, and thank you all for watching. We'll see each other in the next video. Bye bye!